HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week so you can savor summer flavor all season long. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code AWFUL16 at HelloFresh.com slash AWFUL16. Hey folks, as non-patrons will have already noticed, my audio sucks this week. Uh, my main record was corrupted and we had to go with an emergency backup that was a much lower quality. So apologies for that and we promise to have everything back to normal for you next week. She is way too excited in her delivery of this message yeah. about sending her kid away to die. <laughs> and like talks about how great it's going to be. Like a Remember kids, martyrdom makes you cool. Like I, what yes. the fuck? <laughs> That's absolutely a message. Oh my god. Oh, cuz she all but promises them 72 virgins. Yeah, she's just like I'm so right. proud of you. I could not be prouder of you going off to die for our wrathful god. Dying on my knees is cool. Call me Miles Davis. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema in hopes of inoculating ourselves against Zack Snyder movies. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting <laughs> 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Very excited. Excellent pick this week. Oh, yeah, no, I was real happy with this one. And Eli's off again this week, but we're excited to welcome in a new guest masochist. You may know Eve from her TikTok channel, Eve Was Framed, and if you don't, you should. Eve, welcome to The Scathing Atheist. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm excited. No worries, no worries. And and we're excited to have you. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Lion of Judah. It's the story of the week leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, told through the eyes of animal society in Israel. Mm -hmm. And that animal society is full of racism. Boy, isn't it? <laughs> so much racism. <laughs> it's, it's so much. It's shocking. This is a children's movie. This is animated. And it's not clear where this children's movie lands on racism exactly. <laughs> but if I'm being as generous as possible, the movie is, so, it's something like racial sensitivity training for kids who might be harboring animal themed bigotry that they learned in the <laughs> Old Testament. That's like the best explanation of this. That's, yeah, the most, like the, the other end of that spectrum is it's a way to indoctrinate your children into anti-Semitism. Yep. I'm going to go with that oh, one. <laughs> definitely that, too. I was being really nice not mentioning that. Right, so right. And Eve, how bad was this movie? This was a really bad movie. <laughs> it was. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> it was so bad. I think we could do a study on the lives of the kids that have watched this and directly link it to the amount of therapy that they are going to need as adults. Right? Yes. <laughs> it's so bad. Very likely. Everything about this, like over and over again, I just have in my notes, this is a fucked up cartoon, y'all. It's a cartoon. It's insane. So we talk, it's a talking animals cartoon, right? Because like there's adult cartoons and shit, but this ain't one of those. Right. Now, I'm always curious where our guests are coming from on these things. Eve, did you grow up watching Christian movies or was this like a whole new experience for you? Unfortunately, I did grow up watching Christian movies, but I have not watched any, I don't know, probably like six or seven years. So this was a really, really big reminder of what I have been not missing out on. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, I was really expecting when you paused there, I was really expecting the next word to be traumatizing. This was a really traumatizing. Yeah. If we're being honest. Yeah, it was it was triggering to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So is there anything that you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I have to go with best worst Charlotte's Web remake because that was the vibe that I was getting from <laughs> yep, the characters. Very much. Yeah, no, this was, yeah, no, this was Christian Charlotte's Web, I guess. It was EB extra white. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh really God. racist. Shocking. So, okay, I was going to go with best worst recycled backgrounds. Okay, so apologies for dropping kind of a video game nerd term here, but if a movie could be a Metroidvania, that was this movie. So, okay, if it, I, I play VR games, play a lot of old games and shit. I, I'm a retro gamer. Back when they couldn't fit whole games into the cartridge, what they would do to make up for that is they'd send you back and forth across the same environment, you know, but like, oh, but now it's a shooter. Oh, but now it's a stealth <laughs> game. Oh, but now you're a wolf looking for fucking tears for an hour and a half. 
they Sorry. did that in the movie. That's yes. exactly that's exactly what they did. Over and over again in the movie, they're like, okay, but now they're sneaking through and it's nighttime. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> different. <laughs> okay, for best worst, I'm gonna go with best worst menorahs. <laughs> now, okay. There are menorahs in this movie, but they make no sense. The movie was just saying to himself, they're like, okay, so what's what's Israel about? It's menorahs, right? That's the that, <laughs> Menorahs means Israel means Judaism. We're telling the story of Passover, and they were like, "Yeah, Hanukkah menorahs." There's you know, menorahs everywhere. They would have menorahs on all their stuff. Well, I think like very often they're there to like remind us. But this part is Jewish. This is not Christian. This whole part with the animal sacrifice. This is not Christian stuff. <laughs> menorah, right? They're all like different styles and colors and themes too, and they're just randomly placed. Like on boxes or like in a barn, <laughs> just random menorahs. Right, we're, we're, it makes no sense. Yeah, right. So in their head, like Jewish farmers would walk into a barn, deal with the <laughs> sheep, and then be like, you know what, menorah goes on this box. Yeah, right obviously now. we would put. Yeah, yeah. It's, again, it's it's video game. Like you have to collect all the menorahs as you go. You can power up. There's a skill tree. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you <laughs> what. We've got a whole panoply of bigotries on the other side of this break. So we're going to pause to steal ourselves. But we'll be back in a minute with all the cutesy blood sacrifice references that are the Lion of Judah. You know, like you, I listen to a lot of podcasts, especially current event shows. And lately, I've been listening to society atrophy around us, punctuated by the deafening silence of the majority's indifference. And one of the main reasons that I'm able to keep listening is because I use my Raycon wireless earbuds to do it. That's right, Noah. It can be depressing to learn virtually any news item in 2022. But the agony is mitigated somewhat by how good Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound. They're better than ever. They're even optimized with gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit so that no matter how hard you shake with rage, they will not budge. Trust me, I've shaked very hard. <laughs> Raycons offer three sound profiles to match what you're listening to, plus noise isolation and awareness mode so you can choose to be immersed in sound or be able to hear the world crumble around you. I like to use awareness mode when I'm driving because let's face it, we can't be too far off from air raid sirens. And if you find yourself hiding in a community bunker or something like that, you can count on Raycon's eight hours of playtime and 32-hour battery life to keep you company until the all-clear sounds. You can even charge them wirelessly. And with the economy stumbling downstairs like a drunken televangelist, you'll be happy to hear that with Raycon, you get the same quality audio as other premium brands, but at half the price. Yes, really. But that doesn't mean they won't last. Unlike American democracy, these suckers are durable. It's no wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. So quick, before our entire economic infrastructure collapses under the weight of our collective neglect, check out Raycon's wireless earbuds. My guess is that you're going to want to leave them a five-star review, too. Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today and get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Raycon. Probably mad at us for the way we framed this ad, but still very good headphones. Really good. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome to the first ever writer's room meeting for the Lion of Judah. Hooray! Hurrah! Praise Jesus! I'm a different guy! I'm a different guy, too! Now, as you all know, the concept for this movie is that we're going to take a bunch of lovable animal characters and we're going to have them reenact a few of the Bible stories where animals feature prominently. That way we can rope kids in with the promise of cuddly animals, then blindside them with psychologically scarring death cult mythology that you can't possibly comprehend at such a tender young age. Ray. Hurrah! Amen. Still a different guy. So let's let's brainstorm a bit. What Bible stories have animals in them? Oh, uh, Noah's Ark. Right? Yes, but almost all of them die in that one. Mm. I feel like that might be a little disturbing. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the lamb that replaces Isaac in Abraham's sacrifice? Did you did you hear it? I heard it. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay, what about the story where Jesus exercises the demons into that herd of pigs and and then and, and, then, and then kills and then, them by making them careen off a cliff into the sea? Yep, yep. That's how the sentence ends. Ah. Oh, how about the lion that fights Samson? And it gets his head ripped open to death. All right, what about the foxes he tied flaming torches to? I, I, well, I mean, I guess they might have survived. He, he set them on fire, though. Oh, I got an idea. 
Do the bears that Elijah summoned to Molo's children, do they die? C- guys, come on. There has to be an animal story in the Bible that's appropriate for children. Ah. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. What about the talking donkey from Numbers? I, I, I honestly, I'm not sure I remember that one. Remind me what he does. Uh, he, he warns a dude that an angel's about to chop his head off with a sword for transgressing against our wrathful and petty God. Perfect. This movie's going to be awesome, right? <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up with some biblical parchment credits. <laughs> Basically, so we're going to sketch out all the various characters at this point, And they're all like four pen strokes from copyright violations. <laughs> yeah. And there's this weird Disney Arabian Nights music playing in the background. Yep. That's clearly not actually Disney music, but it's trying to be. Yeah. It's like four notes off of a copyright <laughs> violation. Yeah. Huh? Right. I, I recognized, of course, Bruce Marciano's name in the credits and got all excited. And I'm like, wow, I'm just so deep into my nerdery at this point. That's the guy that plays Jesus in all the Encounter movies. And this, right? And, and once again, Jesus yeah, he's voice of Jesus in this. I don't know how the hell he managed that, but. I didn't catch him in the credits, but as soon as Jesus started talking, I was like, that's Bruce Marshall. Oh, no, all that's even worse. <laughs> oh, God. It's the guy. It's that guy. We've watched so many movies with him. He's the worst. Oh, man. I don't know if you guys caught it, but one of the producer's names was Michael Scott. And I just <laughs> pictured <laughs> that it was the actual <laughs> Michael Scott from The Office that helped produce this movie. And it made it make so much more sense. Yeah, no, I explained so yeah, much. The racial sensitivity uh, training. Yeah, Larry Wilmore has to deal with A hundred percent. That makes a lot of sense. Of course, there were also real actors in the fucking credits, which was sad. Yeah, they had like Ernest Borgnine as one of the main voice actors. He was Marty. Ernest Borgnine. Michael Madsen. I was like, wow, this is weird. But also, <laughs> might as well be Chuck Norris's son. Clint Eastwood's son is in it. Scott Eastwood, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scott Eastwood. It's, just, it's fucking sad. So, okay. So eventually these credits resolve on a nail that looks for all the world like a giant stone butt plug when we first see it. 100% it does. Abs- my note to myself was like, oh, that's a nail. <laughs> when, they, when they finally like pan and zoom enough that you're like, okay. All right. Now this wow. makes way more this sense. This is a children's movie. <laughs> Hey, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If that was a butt plug, not the most disturbing thing in a children's movie of this film. No. That's true, (laughs) sadly. That's true. It was going to get worse for kids either way. Now, okay, so, but this nail is being used to nail up a chest, not a savior, right? So we see a chest nailed shut, and then it's thrown in the back of this mule cart, which heads into town. At this point, we zoom into a barn filled with wacky animal characters sleeping. We're going to spend... I'm going to say conservatively 11 minutes of this film on these animals sleeping right? <laughs> at various times. It may be more, maybe even more. Yeah, yeah. I might be undershooting <laughs> that at 11 minutes. I like the music that we get at this point. It didn't line up at all with what we're watching, but it was like a... It was like the music of an 80s sitcom about Jesus making it in the city. You know, <laughs> that, that like, joy, like perfect strangers theme about okay. Jesus somehow. Yeah. So yeah, so we're watching all these animals sleep. The cow accidentally bites the pig's tail in his sleep, and and that causes a Rube Goldbergian series of shenanigans. That was a very weird part, too. And I don't know if you guys caught it, but right before, the horse inhales the rat's tail, like they're oh, all yeah, sleeping yeah. and breathing in each other's tails. And it looked so suggestive, like the <laughs> cow being tempted by the pig's tail, and she's like, no, stop, and... <laughs> then bites down. It, that was a sign of all of the weirdness to come, for sure. There was definitely a Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve feel to it. Now that you mention it, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't on to it yet, but you're right. That should that should have tipped us off. It's going to get weirder. So, but the animals all wake up because of the shenanigans, and some farmers toss this crate from the beginning into the barn. This is apparently a nine-second way station for this package, right? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. What's the logistics of the the box and the crate and the wagons? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. This was, um, you know, old timey FedEx or something. Yeah. There's zero explanation given for the logistical process of why this box is being taken from place to place. Very strange. 
So, but it's going to be there just long enough for us to introduce all of these wacky barnyard animals to the lamb that's in the box right now. At first, we just see the box shaking around and they're like, oh, what's in there? We're all very scared of it and curious. The rat falls into the box. This rat, of course, is Ernest Borgnine. The character's <laughs> name is Slink. And it's super clever, too. They're like, you know, the box says, oh, I'm a lion. And they get all scared. But he, and he hops out and he's it's actually just a lamb. It wasn't a lion at all. Bum, bum, bum. Right. And then we get a dance battle. A, well, a one side of a dance battle. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was painful to watch. And also, can we just acknowledge that Judah the lamb does not look like a lamb. It looks like a Gorgonite from Small Soldiers, like Archer, the Gorgonite, <laughs> like 100%. I saw the face and I was like, why does this look so familiar? And immediately had to go to Google and I was like, it's Archer the Gorgonite it's, in it's, lamb form. It's so terrifying. I had it down as like, if you ask Dolly to cross lamb chop and ugly Sonic, right? <laughs> God, that was, the whole thing was just terrifying. And those teeth and it's fucking... Ugh. Okay, yeah, but but the, he jumps out, the horse faints, the pig huh, farts. Because <laughs> fart. Classic. Is, yeah, that's, that's this, this movie's level. But yes, this is a lamb named Judah, and he is quite confident in his ability to set people free. This will be important. Mm, mm-hmm. Who else in history was famous for setting people free. I wonder if there's going to be a metaphor to this. Mm, yes. We'll find out. Yeah, right, right. So yeah, so they open the door, the lamb darts for his freedom, the other barnyard animals are like, but that doesn't make sense because then where would we go, right? They give us food here. And he's like, damn it. And then they crate him up and ship him back out. Again, it was a nine second layover. Yeah, and they see them getting carted away and the <laughs> one of the boxes on the back of the cart says Jerusalem. Like it was addressed by the UPS store. Like it was printed on the, like one Jerusalem road, Jerusalem, (laughs) Jerusalem, (laughs) Jerusalem. Like that's all you need to get there. Just write the city and it'll make it. (laughs) So, and we should point out too that before he gets crated back up, Drake the rooster, the one that was dance battling with him, accidentally fell into the crate. So now Drake is, is heading to Jerusalem as well. Now, they, of course, can't read that package in the back because they're a bunch of barnyard animals. But luckily, just then, the wise Scottish pigeon shows up. (laughs) Was she a pigeon or a chicken? I had her as a hen. I was trying to figure that out. Okay. Definitely Scottish. Yeah, the animation was great. We could tell what kind of (laughs) birds we were dealing with. (laughs) Yeah, and she knows um, just everything about Jewish tradition, and she explains it to all of them. Yeah. How it's Passover, and they're all getting sacrificed, and that's what's happening, so... Drake and Judah are going to get sacrificed. Well, Drake should be fine until Caparot, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. This is a very narrow joke, but <laughs> she says it so casually too. Like she's just explaining blood sacrifice yes! to a bunch of animals <laughs> as their friend is carted off in a child's cartoon. Yes, so weird. <laughs> So, uh, but Ernest Borgnine is going to save him, damn it. He's like, come on, guys, we've got to go to Jerusalem and, and save Drake. And they're like, do we really? And he's like, it's the whole fucking plot. This is all we've got. <laughs> yeah. The, the rest of the characters are like, fuck, fine. We'll do the movie. Like, that's that's the last part of the scene. It's really weird. Yeah. And so, yeah, so they all reluctantly decide to leave together. It takes a while for the horse because the horse is a scary cat horse. That's his personality. Also, the horse looks completely coked out of his mind the entire movie. Yes! <laughs> like, his <laughs> eyes are just, I mean, he's not okay, clearly, <laughs> as we find out. But he's, like, on something, for sure. Yeah, well, that would explain a lot, right? Because that would explain the paranoia as well. Absolutely. Yeah, he looks like one of Donald Trump's kids giving a speech <laughs> on a <laughs> video screen or something. <laughs> So, but as they're leaving, the Scottish pigeon calls after him and says that only the king can set their friends free. The king. Pin in that. I feel like this is related to the, the person who does the free. I don't know. We'll, yeah. we'll get there. It's well, subtle. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so subtle. All the symbolism. So, okay. So now we're going to cut to Judah and Drake in the box. Uh, they're heading to their deaths, of course. Now, Drake is going to be the comic relief in sort of the sense of the like 
funny uncle who's mistaking the kids for being much younger than they are trying to vamp way. Right. Like this guy, his whole bit is like, I'm going to say the same word over and over again. And it'll be funny because I'll be saying the same word a lot in every sentence. It's painful. (laughs) I did enjoy the music at this point. Like they clearly told me like, Hey guys, you got to play some music here. What's the opposite of getting carted to a blood sacrifice? And that's what they did. They just went with the complete <laughs> exact opposite of that to me. They're like, all right, it's a kid's movie. We got to lighten it up. But that is exactly what's happening. It is so weird. Well, what my favorite thing about the music here is that they don't cut it out before they move on to the next scene, which starts with the pig singing, she'll be coming around the mountain. So there's a, a moment where the pig is singing one song while the fucking movie is playing a different one. Play jarring. <laughs> but this is where they're going to run into Scott Eastwood, the donkey. Which, how in the hell did they get Scott Eastwood to do this movie? I guess this was towards the beginning of his career. But, like, he's Clint Eastwood's kid. He knew he was going places, though, right? Like, <laughs> Right, you would think. I would be like, I think I can pass on this script. Like, <laughs> what made him read this and decide, I gotta do it? <laughs> I feel like he got a call from dad. You're fucking doing it. Yeah, script. right, He's right. Like, he had like a apparently. drunk driving ticket that would only be forgiven if his kid, him or his kid, agreed to be in this movie or some shit. Yeah, and some sins of humanity. Same thing. <laughs> how badly do you think he regretted it once he saw how they animated his hair or mane or whatever, <laughs> whatever that broom situation on top of his head was? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. So and his whole personality is cool. Right. Yep. That's that's the donkey's personality for sure. But it's like it's cool. I don't want to be a beast of burden and enslaved until I, my body is broken. And then they just <laughs> shoot me out behind the shed. Like that's his goal. And everybody else is like, no, I mean, you kind of got to do that, man. That's your thing. But they literally bump into him and the rope that's around his neck accidentally gets tied around the ring in the pig's nose. And so now they're like handcuffed together a la an 80s sitcom. How does that accidentally happen? (laughs) 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 Like, it's the weirdest thing. And also the fact that the pig is somehow the one dragging the donkey around. You would think that the donkey has a one up here like yeah the pig has the ring in his nose not the other way around i don't understand (laughs) it right the donkey's neck versus the pig's fucking septum yeah i don't think it doesn't yeah but now but he's reluctantly going because they're like we're going to jerusalem and he's like i was enslaved there i am just now escaping and they're like tough shit you're coming with us now because you're (laughs) tied to the pig's nose okay question just in real life do donkeys get tied up with a rope in the format of a noose? Is that normal? <laughs> or is that just a terrifying glimpse into the life of the animators? It was most like, definitely oh, yeah. a noose. This I is mean, what rope looks like around a neck anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. All right. So Judah and Drake, Judah the lamb and Drake the, the rooster, make it to Jerusalem. And they're put into a room with all the other doomed sacrifice animals. Now, Judah, of course, his whole thing is that he's going to set people free. So he explains to all the other sacrificial animals that he is going to set them free. He really has a thing for setting animals free. Clearly, as we learn, he gets like weirdly excited talking about it, but then proceeds to not do a whole lot for a while. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then just kind of waits for that to happen. (laughs) He's going to be out. He's going to be out for a while. Wow. It's a lot like Jesus. Yeah. (laughs) It's a lot like Jesus. So meanwhile, the the gang arrives in Jerusalem and they see this crossroads and it's really impressive. Like you see that you're like, wow, they really went all out on the CGI. We will spend the rest of the movie in this crossroads. (laughs) We will revisit this crossroads like 37 times in this film. So but they all get there. They're very scared of um, being in the big city. And then we cut back to the animal sacrificial dungeon that is part of this children's movie where Drake is singing and everybody, including us as the audience, wants him to shut the fuck up. It's so bad. It's so annoying. And he only knows one song, I guess. Right, yeah, we hear him singing uh, Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen a couple of different times. Uh, Like, it's a good, like, Louis Armstrong, I like it, but like, 
Maybe don't sing a song about slavery in your Bible story for kids. I don't know. While you're being outright racist, like the entire movie. <laughs> you're about to ramp up the racism too. Yeah. 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 No, it, it, it gets worse from here. And of course, the Drake the Chicken has to do his one joke where he says the word over and over again. There's these two pigeons that are trying to explain to them that they're going to be martyred now for the Jewish faith. And that that's actually a really good thing. And Drake is going, martyr, martyr rhymes with tartar. Martyr, martyr, martyr. Now it's funny because I said it five times, right? <laughs> Rule of fives? Yeah, I think this movie holds a record for the most amount of times the word martyr is said in a 30 second period. They are just going all in with the extremist childhood indoctrination. Like, no shame. No. We're just going to say martyr until you think it's a normal word to use every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I wrote my notes. Martyr does rhyme with tartar. It's funny because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> did they even do the what's a martyr? Like, did they even nope. use that? One? Like, nope. I don't even think they switched to matter. Like, they just did martyr tartar and that's it. Yeah. Like a hundred times. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> so, okay. So the gang enters the gates of Jerusalem now. we <laughs> They walk into the same crossroads that they saw from afar earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a letdown because it's like this big moment and they have the music and it pans to the animals and it pans to Jerusalem they're seeing. And it's like this one little tiny alleyway with yes! three people in it. <laughs> and they act like they're seeing the Empire State Building for the first time. They're like in <laughs> awe. But their barn was bigger and cooler looking than this right. little scene that they're showing of Jerusalem. <laughs> yes, it was. I like how they reach the front door of Jerusalem. Yeah. They're just like, and human guards are like, oh, it's probably, it's just a rescue party of talking animals. Yeah. And he yeah. steps aside. <laughs> and he's totally like, normal. Go ahead, you guys. Yeah. Stop right there in the door and look at your map. That's great. That's great. You're awesome tourists. It's a wild cow that's coming to our town. Yeah. <laughs> Is that donkey tied to that? That's fine. That's in the rat <laughs> leading the way. How did you even do that? I, I don't, I don't want to know. Is that a noose? What the fuck? Is, you know what? Not my business. Yeah. I'm just a guard. <laughs> Your customs, I guess. All right. So now it's nighttime at the sacrifice dungeon, and it's time for the, the doves to really explain to Drake and Judah exactly what martyr means. Now, this is going to be a theme of the film. Everybody keeps explaining to the lamb that he's going to be sacrificed, and he keeps not getting it. Yeah, just casual talk about martyrdom, <laughs> which reminds me of being in youth group as a child. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. But the pigeons, God, Jesus, this is so fucking racist. The pigeons are like, but you are perfectly white and blemishless. I'm like, is he delightsome? Are you going to tell me he's delightsome next? <laughs> it's so close to that. <laughs> like you, you didn't exact, those were exact words. It was like blemish free. Look at that amazing blemish free, all white lamb. Fuck, that's cool. Blemish free. It's so much. Yeah. They literally refer to Judah as privileged and I think this is the only time a Christian movie will ever acknowledge white privilege. <laughs> 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 They're like, you're white. You're so privileged. And by accident, they just say that unapologetically in this racist movie. They, they almost, yeah, they almost come back and go, oh, we don't need it. We don't mean it like that. We don't mean it. No, this is not, this is not critical race theory. I'm so, very sorry. <laughs> they don't, but the, the movie doesn't hear itself. If the movie heard itself, all of the stuff that's about to happen would not happen. That's true. So it gets no, that's so much worse from here. I thought that that was going to be like some of the most edgy racist stuff happening. Nope. No, no. so much worse. No, we're setting no, no. up themes. There was a racist iceberg connected to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so then we cut back into town and we have to have like each of the various characters get separated from the other ones in different ways, but they can't come up with any ways for it to happen. So like one of them just turns down an alley and falls asleep and the, the pig and the donkey once again managed to tie themselves in a knot in a way that makes no sense from like, you know, with earth physics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The rope had to get so much bigger for this to happen because yeah. they, they do like the hijinks of like walking around each other. You know, like if like the dog on the leash does the wrong thing and circles you a few times. It was like that with two people doing that. And they get themselves tied to a stake. Yeah. And then they just like sit there and they're like, yeah, we're stuck here. Well, I guess we're just here until we starve to death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just Children's movie animals just tied to a stake and they like yeah. pan out slowly and let you just like keep watching these animals <laughs> tied exactly. to a stake for no reason. <laughs> 
I just like the idea that Jesus got crucified because of hijinks like that. Somehow he was just like, blah, 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 and he was like stuck to a cross. I don't know. <laughs> like a Rube Goldberg thing. Just nails start flying because of a, a thing that lit the thing. And a, there was a bowling ball somehow. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, and and so they they continue on. Now we've we've gotten rid of the horse who fell asleep in the alley. We've gotten rid of the pig and the donkey who got tied around the stake. Esme is just like, ah, oh, looks like some good fucking hay, and then just goes and eats some hay and takes a nap. That's the cow. Which all of the hay in this animation looks like fried pubes, straight up. <laughs> it doesn't look like straw. It just looks like weird pubes. <laughs> It was weird the shit they couldn't animate in this film. There was just random things where they're like, no, we absolutely can't do hay. I'm sorry. Right. We, we can do fried pubes. We got fried pubes down pat. Don't ask us why. <laughs> but then, and then finally, the, the rat, Ernest Borgnine, the rat, is all by himself. He realizes that there's nobody behind him, and there's a crow that's trying to kill him, so he has to run and hide in a little crack in the wall. All right. So this movie's racism in the last scene or so got way more explicit than I think any of us were prepared for. So we're just going to pause to recalibrate for a minute, but we're back in a flash with even more of the lion of Judah. Hey, Heath, are you doing something highly impractical to figure out what coffee to buy? What? No, this is, is that practical. Is that an MRI mish? You know, you know, what? I'm going to skip right past it. Okay. Why don't you just try trade coffee? Oh, what's trade coffee? Trade Coffee is a great way to get amazing coffee from independent roasters chosen by a team of expert coffee tasters. They sample thousands of different coffees and keep 450 varieties at any moment, fresh and ready to ship straight to your door. They sent us a roast by Necessary Coffee with beans from Ethiopia, and Lucinda was a huge fan. Notes of caramel and stone fruit. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. But how do they know what I like? You just answer a couple of questions on their site. And they find a variety of great roasts that are personalized to your taste profile. And they're so confident that they'll find something that you like, they even have a first match guarantee. If you don't like their first selection, they'll take your feedback and a coffee expert will work with you to find the perfect match and send you a brand new bag for free. Okay, I'm in. How do I sign up? Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash awful. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash awful and let Trade find you a coffee that you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash awful for $30 off. Drinktrade.com slash awful for $30 off. Got it. Is that a, is it an e-meter? It, this is Kona coffee. It might have volcano demons, Noah. Oh, it's possible. Oh, okay. And I want to meet Christy Alley. No, you don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Good point. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the writer's room. Hurrah. Praise Jesus. Third guy. Fourth guy. First guy, hurrah again. Just to follow okay, up. Okay, okay. I, I, I feel like this is going to get cumbersome. Third guy, fourth guy, go ahead and, and, and take lunch. Nice. Chick-fil-A, buddy? You know it. All right, later, nerds. Okay, okay. Love bye. Chick-fil-A. Bye. Okay, so just to be clear, not hurrah. Okay, so, so, so somehow we landed on writing the story of the donkey that talks from Numbers who warns a guy that angels right. about to chop off his head with a sword for transgressing against our wrathful and petty god, and it's not going well. Oh. So, uh, no hurrah. Hurrah rescinded? Yes, yes, hurrah rescinded. I, look, I was looking at the last scene. You guys ended Act One with what seems to be a, a pair of white supremacist doves praising doves. the protagonist for being all white and having no blemishes. No blemishes at all. Yeah, he's super white. Like perfect white. And he's kind of like a savior, like a perfect white savior. How is okay, that bad? So, so, I, see, I was giving you a second to hear it. You're still nothing? What? Uh, okay, okay. Look, I, I, I'm just saying. We should probably steer away from a theme of animal-based eugenics in our animated movie for children. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Totally hear you. Totally hear you. Loud and clear, boss. No more animal-based eugenics. Got it. Okay. So I, I feel like you maybe just put way too much stress on animal-based when you said that. I did. Yes, I stressed animal-based. Yes, well, so so do you, were you planning on doing something with human eugenics? I... Okay, so you... You don't want that. I, no, I do not. You don't want that? I don't okay. want that. Uh, but we're telling a story, like a Bible story, about a race of people chosen by God. Yeah. I mean, so there's going to be 
And then a subset of that group is rechosen by God to be Christian. So well, it's so like it's, super no, eugenics-y. I, I, right, right. But like, can, I, like, I feel like we could just gently gloss over that. Yeah, all right. I guess heard, heard, totally. Gentle gloss. No problem. All right. So what, what are we thinking for act two? Okay. So I was thinking about a rivalry between two groups of birds and one group is collecting white sheets for something. All right, no, that sounds perfect. Just keep, just keep me posted. You got it. We probably won't need to have another one of these meetings. Probably not. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Monty the horse waking up late at night in the alley. Are the bad guys in this movie going to be blackbirds? Yeah, the bad guys are going to be. Yeah, black. <laughs> sure are. They're blackbirds of terror. <laughs> <They are. Yep. laughs> blackbirds of terror specifically that hang out in the alleys in. <laughs> urban areas. It's so bad. <laughs> At least they got a white guy. They got Michael Madsen to do the voice of this one. At least it wasn't like the only African American voice in the movie, which would have surprised me 0%. <laughs> no, that would not have been surprising. But no, it's Michael Madsen and one other guy. And they're doing Italian Americans from New York City voice. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, some, yeah, good point. <laughs> they go back and forth. It starts as that. It, it moves. Moves around a lot. But that's what they're going for is Italian American like mafia guys running this alley in ancient Jerusalem. Yes. Which, which was weird. And then they go ahead and steal the entire funny like a clown scene. Well, right. From Goodfellas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and of course, during this, Monty, who is already a very scared and timid horse, gets roped into joining the Crow's terror gang. They're going to be called the Uncleans. <laughs> gang of black things in this it's just ugh. that's not made up so bad that's the exact words they use yeah the uncleans and i know they're going for a bible thing but that's gonna make it worse yeah yeah right so okay so the crows lead money out of the alley to go on a job for him this is where he passes horace and jack who are still the the pig and the donkey who are still wound around the stake and they're like, help us. And he's like, I can't. I'm in a gang now. You guys aren't members, I guess. <laughs> you know, blood in, blood out. Right? Yes. So bizarre. Religion. <laughs> wah, wah. And this is a children's movie. I had to tell myself that over and over and over again throughout watching this. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. So the, the uncleans are going to, Jack says that. That's where we introduce that term. And Jack is like, the uncleans rule the street around here. I'm like, mm, let's come up with a different mm -hmm. one. But then we cut to this was their fucking choice. We cut to them stealing white sheets. Okay. Literally, okay. literally white sheets. Th th this it feels like the movie's like daring me not to accuse them of racism the whole time. <laughs> and then all and, and then you get to here and you're like, yeah. you were saying uncleans, can you not? And then some black characters, black birds, but you know, black characters are like, yeah, they call us the uncleans, lots of animal racism around here. So we're collecting white sheets. <laughs> and I was like, all right, it's you switched it. The, you know, it's the the black characters doing the white sheets. Yeah, but if, if you bring menorahs in their yard, it's not going to be better. I still feel like a lot of KKK influence on the people who made this movie. Had yeah. To, right? The fact that no one was like, hey, guys, the white sheet thing. Maybe we should rethink that. <laughs> like, not one person. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I think maybe there is that one person. And they were like, yeah, but, you know, honor the Grand Dragon. So. Yeah, so, yeah right, right. Honestly. <laughs> we're doing oh it. God. So, yeah. So, but, and at this point, he's like, hey, why are we stealing white sheets? And he's like, it's going to be unbelievably unclear, honestly. But <laughs> to understand just how unclear, I have to tell you about my dream. Now, Eve, you don't know this, but we, we have a thing on, on the show where the only person who has to listen to your dream is people that you're fucking, other than Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King gets the exception. You have to listen to his dream. Yes, you do. That is fair. So now Michael Madsen has to fuck us. <laughs> but uh, or That's, that's in, cool. In I'm, crow I'm, form. Yeah, no, it's I'm not. This, they, they, they're, there, are, there are worse outcomes. In crow form. <laughs> of this role. Yeah. <laughs> I want him to do it as Mr. Blonde. <laughs> in, in the trunk of a car, yeah. Uh, with the soda. He's got to be slurping the soda the whole time. Anyway, so the raven once dreamed that he was in a big white sheet being lowered down with a bunch of other animals. 
And for that reason and that reason alone, he and the other ravens have been collecting white sheets ever since. This really sounds like you're just making this shit up. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is clearly. It's so weird. All of a sudden, he's like a, a prophet. Like he goes from the mafia boss to, let me tell you about this dream I had. And then gets all like Christian symbolic with it. It's so bizarre. <laughs> yeah. No, and in his dream, he heard Jesus redeeming all the unclean animals saying, do not call anything impure that God hath made clean. So, you know. He knows that eventually black animals will be okay too. (laughs) To be clear, yeah. Now they've switched a little bit. It's the KKK thing was just super thick, but now it's the voice of God told me that Judaism is stupid. Right. So we've got the full anti-Semitism now too. Yeah. Great. And they use the word cleansing, specifically the word cleansing. Thank Why? you. <laughs> Who thought that was a good idea? Stop saying that. Oh, How am I not hearing ethnic cleansing after watching this scene and you keep saying cleansing? It's impossible right. not to. <laughs> so bad. And so, and Monty's like, you know, I know a little s- something about cleansing and I'm like, oh God. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 no. I just, and so we doodly do into Monty's cleansing memory. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so bad. But apparently theirs was the stable where Jesus was born all those years ago. Of course it was. Right. So he's like, I remember this time when like there was a big census that makes no fucking sense. If you think about it for eight seconds, logistically, it's just <laughs> insanity. What, what town, like what town am I from? I don't fucking anyway. So he tells the story though of, of Mary and, and Joseph staying in the barn and the baby being born in the manger and somebody then said something about cleansing. Why? Why? Again, That's, I don't that know. <laughs> Somebody can stick <laughs> that story that. into this scene, I guess. <laughs> God. You never see Mary and Joseph in the inevitable fight in this manger scene moment. It feels like they'd be in a fight, right? I feel like they were probably in a fight quite a bit in those nine months leading up to it as well. Yeah. yeah. But apparently, so we watch all the farm animals watch Mary give birth <laughs> and then the Scottish pigeon or hen or whatever from before comes out and starts going like, oh, you're not going to believe this. This is the Jewish Messiah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she knows everything somehow. Also, I love that they're supposedly watching Mary give birth, but the only sound you hear are actual crickets chirping in the background. Yes. Like, blood <laughs> sacrifice and martyrdom is totally fine for a kid's movie, but we draw the line at the sound of a woman giving birth. So we're just going to give you crickets <laughs> chirping and all the animals' jaws dropped. Well, I think I think Jesus was too nice to hurt on the way out, right? Like, she probably, it oh, was, he was probably very point. thoughtful. about Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> But anyway, so the, and that oh, and this of course leads to, in my opinion, the only good joke in the movie. Drake the pigeon says, "Ah, he is the lamb that will cleanse them all." And Drake the rooster goes, "Wait, Mary had a little lamb." And I'm like, "Okay, that's that's pretty good. That was, that was solid. It was good. Wordplay. Credit where credit is due." Nailed it, movie. <laughs> I didn't forget the racism thing. I just mm. now you were doing a whole lot of it. Yeah. I didn't forget, but that was that was good for a second. <laughs> and then, so we haven't talked about this up to this point, but this movie has an insane amount of padding in it, right? Like, every establishing shot is a minute and a half. We'll just cut away to a song for no fucking reason. They were desperately trying to get to an hour and 23 or whatever it was they got to. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You don't get an 83-minute feature-length movie without a little bit of padding. Right, yeah. (laughs) It's it's mostly padding. The weird part is they skip through so many important scenes. Like, even the manger scene, that was so fast, and now... As you see, they're going to spend so much time on irrelevant moments. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, you're right. We we get we go through the birth of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in 30 <laughs> seconds, and then we get two and a half minutes of musically watching the gang sleep. Straight up just sleep and terrible music. Oh, oh. The- I, did, I did enjoy how the pig was sleeping at this moment. So the, the, this is the pig and the donkey still tied to that stake, right? Mm-hmm. So the pig's doing the, it's the pig's like me on an airplane. I, I fall asleep <laughs> and then I start like nodding off in directions <laughs> and I like headbutt the person next to me by accident. And I feel so embarrassed every time and I can't do anything about it. I need like, I need to like 
tie my forehead back to the chair somehow. I don't know. (laughs) Did you guys hear the lyrics to the song that's playing in the background as they're all sleeping? No. There's one point where it goes, carry me, let's run away to the gates made of pearl. It's literally them singing about like wanting Jesus to just take them away so they can just drink the Kool-Aid and go off. To wow, yeah. so bizarre. That's wow. awful Jim Jones, That's isn't creepy. it? Right? So, yeah, so after two solid minutes of watching cartoon animals sleep, <laughs> eventually Slink wakes up and he thinks he hears Drake, so he wanders out into the alley, but then the uncleans attack him, Right. Why wouldn't this just be the beginning of the scene? I don't know. We got 19 (laughs) minutes of sleeping animal montage. Just go to the next day. Like, we'll get what happened. We'll, as the audience, understand that it's the next day and a new thing is happening. When he rubs sleep out of his eyes, we'll be like, ah, there was night. Yeah. (laughs) And we only get like 10 seconds of this escape scene. Well, right. Yeah, right. (laughs) So, yeah. So, Slink escapes into a, a fucking platformer. Apparently, right? <laughs> He's bounced, slid, and shuffled along until eventually he happens upon Horace and Jack. But that's expensive animation, whereas panning slowly away from a pig, knee- leaning slightly to the left, is probably less expensive. Fair, fair yeah, point. He grabs a pole that's coming out of a wall and he's like, oh, Aladdin, hey, we're both spinning around the same pole for a second. Cool. What? Cool. <laughs> Keeps going. So weird. Yeah. And then he goes to a pipe and he pops out and there's the pig and the and the donkey, but the ravens are there, too, now. Did you guys catch the music playing when the ravens, you know, make their grand entrance? It literally sounds like the Darth Vader entrance, whatever that song is. Like, <laughs> really? blatantly put those notes in there. The and Imperial then just, March? Yeah. Yes, that. And then they just act like they didn't just do that and start playing other music all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Again, four notes away. She's like, ba 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 it, we exactly. change one. We change one. We're allowed to. This is allowed. One out of six, and it's a totally different <laughs> song, guys. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. But the gang just kind of all joins back up at this point. So there was never any purpose in separating them whatsoever. <laughs> and but now they're surrounded by blackbirds, and the pig is like, "Oh, guys, there's so many blackbirds here." And one of the ravens has this whole like blackbirds that's our word kind of a moment very uncomfortable it was so strange (laughs) and speaking of drinking the kool-aid what the fuck these crows have a cult yes like a a cult that they think now that the rat is a god king of their cult well he prophecies the coming of a god king yes the prophetic sheet based vision that's what's happening right now sheets again all of the sheets this is a weird ass cartoon guys like so like imagine if we watched this the way that we watch like hindu movies or happy science cult movies imagine that we watch this without any foreknowledge of the christian mythology oh god right and we were just coming to this shit cold which is let's face it the way that like most kids are probably getting this cuz they're getting this when they're far too young to understand this shit how fucking weird is this scene? That's <laughs> oh, such a mind fuck. Why is the rat and the crows and all it just... And the sheets, the white sheets yeah, everywhere. The kids are buying the merch and they're doing stuff with the sheets. It's really bad. Yes. I don't like any of it. <laughs> so the ravens now agree that they're going to help the gang find Drake so that the king can come and make them clean again. I, okay. <laughs> I had <laughs> no idea that that's what was happening. Okay. Using the unclean and clean term again. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Of that. <laughs> so, sorry, y'all. I'm trying not to say cleansing. So. <laughs> Don't say cleansing. I said cleansing. So, yeah. So this is where they're going to really show off their mad animation skills. I love this scene so goddamn much. So we're at that crossroads that I was talking about before. And the, the birds are going to fly around looking for the chicken from before, the rooster from before, right? But what they're going to do is they're going to we're going to watch them fly up a street and then fly back down that very same street and then <laughs> make a 90 degree turn and fly mm. one block up and one block back. We watched that like three times. <laughs> this scene legitimately gave me motion sickness. I was sitting there like, am I feeling nauseous right now watching this? I had to make my screen a little bit more dim. 
And the animation, you clearly can see that they're just avoiding having to show the whole city until the crows are high enough that they just do a bunch of little white squares. Yes. And they're like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that looks like Jerusalem. <laughs> right? It's probably red, white. And it, there's another thing, too. I didn't notice this until late in the film, but apparently these animators cannot do human faces. No, they cannot. So you will occasionally see a human face for like a split second, but by and large, we always see humans from behind or from the neck down or from a great distance where they're not going to have to animate the face. There will be a moment where it makes a lot of sense why, right? Yep. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was like a horror movie the whole time. I was like, wait, have I seen a human's face yet? No, I don't think. I think that was just half of a face. They like really (laughs) fuck with you. (laughs) <laughs> you question whether you've seen a person this entire time. But they show just enough, I think, that you yeah. feel like you've seen a person. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It took me more than half the movie to realize they'd never shown a human face. Right. Yeah, exactly. it's like the Jaws. Jewish people are the Jaws to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's <laughs> no. So, so ultimately, though, the, the crows that we've been watching, they land on the grate to the sacrificial dungeon and they fly down. They're like, oh, this is this is good. This is where the, the chicken that we're looking for is. Again, it was so long. The montage of them flying up and down the same street. That was hilarious. But the, it's so much more of that. Just go straight to the next scene. Like the movie did a montage as if to stop and think to itself what the plot is going to be next. And then <laughs> they figure it out. I think that's exactly what happened. The animators were like, vamp, vamp, vamp. We're doing it. Just write something. <laughs> Okay. That might have been what was in the script. It may have just said vamp, 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 vamp in the fucking script. <laughs> that would make sense. All right. We're going to have him get into a wagon and pass the same tree over. <laughs> <laughs> They're birds, man. We're vamping. We're vamping. <laughs> Did you write anything yet for the next scene? No. Well, as I was going to say, the problem is, Heath, with your version of this movie, it's 38 minutes long, which, hey, I would have been all for. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. That's a win. But yeah. So, but, and now this might be the least comfortable scene. In the whole fucking movie, racism was because this is the scene where the white birds are going to argue with the black birds about which of them is genetically superior. That's real. Literally. <laughs> that's that's real. I don't mean eugenics is real. Sorry, to be clear. I mean, they say that in this scene for real. Yeah. Yes. A French and British <laughs> yes. white dove that are <laughs> very racist together as a pair. And they're all white and they're the cleans and they're arguing with the crows who are the uncleans. And who are the gangsters, right? They're a gang members and, and they're from the streets, from the alleys. Yeah, it's, oh God. It's... And they have white sheets. So it's confusing which team is which, but still it's very bad. <laughs> There's a race war between birds and the crows come in and the French and British white doves are like, this is a, this is a whites only dungeon. It's gross. <laughs> it's so they bad. literally say that. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> Again, for a children's movie, this is a real fucked up cartoon. Yeah. So and, and then and they and this is of course where they hear Drake and they're like, oh, we recognize your voice as the, the rooster we're looking for. Apparently, somehow, <laughs> we'll be back in the next scene to save you. So then we get. I counted. I, I like. I timed this. 25 seconds of and then it became night as an establishment shot. Like the, this is the moonrise. We, we go outside of town and watch the sky darken and the moonrise for 25 seconds. I remember watching that scene and I'm like, okay, it's night. And I'm watching and watching, and then I go, the moon is just now coming up, and then it keeps going. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't just like, oh, there's the moon and it's nighttime now. It's like, oh, very slow, very slow. Exactly, 25 seconds. Yeah, no, we had to sit there while they thought, okay, what else is night? The moon, the moon. Moon happens at night. We already did moon. We already did moon. <laughs> Cue the moon. So, <laughs> it's good. We're doing the moon. We need another thing. <laughs> Just do your next scene. So, yeah, so, but it's that night where we're back in the sacrifice dungeon. We, and then we should point out, of course, as we mentioned earlier in the review, this is like, there's a conspicuous menorah just sitting on top of the box that Judah and Drake are, are stuck in, right? <laughs> just like a little background <laughs> reminder. As if to say, this is a Jewish sacrifice, not a Christian <laughs> one. So the gang comes in to save Drake, and the racist doves are so disgusted that there is a pig in their sacrifice dungeon. 
Right, because unkosher. To be clear, these are Jewish Nazi doves. That's what we're dealing with. And they literally say, this is unkosher. (laughs) They say unkosher. Yes, they do. Oh, so bad. All right, so the guy they need to rescue, of course, he's still in the crate. So they need Monty the Timid Horse to kick the crate open, but he (laughs) kicks Slink by accident. Slapstick in the sacrifice dungeon, guys. Classic, classic. (laughs) Pratt falls, slaps some stuff in the eugenics dungeon. (laughs) Yeah. The gang, like, at this point, they're like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll circle back to the animal eugenics in a minute, white doves. Thank you. We have to kick open this thing, but we'll, we will revisit this. And they do. Yep. Yes, they do. Yep. Many times. That they do. It's, I mean, one could say it was the plot. Yeah. <laughs> it's the plot of the Bible, too. So yeah, well, what are you going to do? That's fair. Yeah. Fair enough. So, uh, but now the guards have heard him. They have to go quick. So Jack the donkey, this is Scott Eastwood's character. He kicks open the crate. And the whole gang escapes. Now, the music that's playing, I guess there's something about freedom in it or something. But like, so like lyrically, maybe it makes a little sense. But musically, it absolutely doesn't. No. Zero sense. It's like they told En Vogue to improvise based on the phrase animals running as best they could. <laughs> oh my God. And the funky divas were just like, I don't know. <laughs> you know that weird dance beat just comes on yeah. and then and then the lyrics don't match the music none of it makes sense no i i was I, like i wrote my notes is, is your jukebox on random is that what we're go- it's like what <laughs> oh free your mind would have been perfect it's fine <laughs> it's fine so they get out of town but just then they realize that judah the lamb isn't there they've got drake but judah stayed behind to release all the other sacrificial animals as foretold by the great prophecy in the kid's cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> He's freeing them from, from Judaism. Yep. That's, that's what's happening right now. It, that is much. exactly what's happening and they're hugging him for it. And he goes to free the, the, the Jewish Nazi doves, but they refuse to leave. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, that was the best part. We're the Lord's chosen we're not leaving. This sacrifice is, it's a God thing. We're awesome and white and Jewish. We're better. Yes. And of course, before he can get everybody out, the guards show back up and he gets caught. Right? The guard's like, oh, it's you, the lamb, causing a bunch of trouble. So he grabs the lamb again. And then he's about to throw him in the crate, but the whole gang shows up to rescue Judah. Attack, And then that scene's over. <laughs> that was so fast. I thought that that was going to be like this big moment in the movie. Like, right. this is what we were yeah. waiting for. And then it's over. No, it's over right away. Well, we got to make room for six minutes of animals sleeping later. You know, well, so. yeah, the, the animators clearly demanded. They got bored. They got so bored in this movie. And they're like, we're going to do the 10 minutes sleeping, the fly. But three seconds for the fight scene. You had something here. Yeah, they didn't. Nope. They already rented this. Set, animated <laughs> set. They, made, they already drew this room. Yep. So, but then, and we should point out that in this scene, Horace and Jack, the rope that's connecting them, that they've still been tied together up to this point, it gets snapped by a flame. Horace gets his head stuck in a jar. He's so wacky. Also, that flame, did you guys notice? It's just like a random pipe that's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> There's you know, no sense. Just your typical a lot of pipe fire in Jerusalem, <laughs> gas man. Right. You know. A lot of fires back then. They just set shit on fire, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, so they they all run out again now, but... <laughs> it's a menorah for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, so they, re- they rescue Judah... They go to run out, but Judah stops to rescue more sacrificial animals, and the people catch him again. So it's just like, oh, okay, so just the last scene didn't even happen, really. <laughs> just like literally the only thing ha- that happened in this sequence then is the pig and the donkey are no longer tied together. There's a lot of two steps forward, three steps back throughout this yeah. entire movie. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> And then a montage while they do the math on that. Fuck, that's negative one, isn't it? Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> Somebody write plus two. Somebody somewhere. make the make the fucking animals sleep real quick while I figure out this math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More crows flying, please. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so Jack makes it out of the city. He's the only one that escapes. And of course, they throw the pig out because he's disgusting. It's a fucking pig. <laughs> Un- unkosher. Yeah. Yep. And then we cut back in. So, but Jack gets caught. He gets caught and he gets tied up again. 
pin in that. So then we cut back inside the sacrifice dungeon where the, the gang minus Jack and Horace are, except for Jack and Horace are right outside of there as well so that they can be part of this, like, this next backstory moment. <laughs> because this is where we have to get Judah the Lamb's tragic backstory. This is such a fucked up, just imagine as we describe this scene, imagine like a four-year-old looking up to you, asking you to explain what's going on scene by scene. In this. Terrifying. Really not well thought through. Yeah, so we get the Lamb telling us about the time his mom said goodbye to him as he was being taken off to be <laughs> sacrificed. <laughs> he tells everyone that He's like, my mom said I'm absolutely perfect and white and delightsome and I'm going to save the world from Judaism. <laughs> yep. That's my prophecy. <laughs> and you watch the crows outside who are listening be like, yikes. Okay. <laughs> this is a really problematic backstory. Are we teaming up with them for something? I feel like this is bad. Well, right. But so specifically, mom says you're going to set people free. Now, what she meant is that by sacrificing him, the people were going to be set free of sin. But he thought that he was going to rescue animals that were in cages. She is also way too excited in her delivery of this message yeah. about sending her kid away to die. <laughs> and like talks about how great it's going to be. Like, a remember, kids, martyrdom makes you cool. Like, I, what yes. the fuck? <laughs> That's absolutely a message. Oh, my God. Oh, because she all but promises them 72 versions. Yeah, she's just like, I'm so right. proud of you. I could not be prouder of you. Going off to die for our wrathful God. If dying on my knees is cool, call me Miles Davis. <laughs> <laughs> so we pull, we pull out of this flashback, and all the characters have the same look on their face as we did, right? They're all like, fuck. True. <laughs> they did. <laughs> there might as well be just a big, like, what? Yeah. And a big pause. <laughs> <laughs> While the movie's like, time out, time out, we're gonna montage shit. sleep or something. Shit. Yeah. Guys, are we still doing this like super racist thing? Yeah, we are, because that's what they're gonna do for the next act. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, this is where Esme remembers that Scottish pigeon or whatever from earlier that name dropped Jesus. She's like, wait a minute, didn't what's your name say that only the king could set them free? Maybe that'll happen in the next act. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> And then so there's this fucked up moment where Slink tries to explain to Judah what it means that he's going to set people free and Judah just keeps not getting it. This is like the second of four times that that'll happen. Yeah. Oh my God. In fairness, he's trying to describe a blood sacrifice where you die for humanity's sins as a lamb. And he's like, I don't get it, man. It's going to be, yeah. And, and the lamb is, a I'm kid. a child. <laughs> if I was the audience of what you just told me, that would be crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Jack gives this like weirdly nihilistic speech about how humanity is beyond redemption. And there isn't a good enough man to, to bring them back from the brink. <laughs> he got so dark. Like, very, very dark. And he even says something in there along the lines of, I don't have a heart, which is straight out of the Wizard of Oz, the Tin Man. Oh, heart. yeah. <laughs> He's That's like, right. I don't have a, a heart. I have ropes for a heart. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> a noose. I have a heart noose. I have a, I have a literal noose. Yeah. Creepy. It's such a shitty setup, too. It's so obvious. It's like... He's like, I'm, you know, the very logical atheist donkey, and I'm, I, I will never believe in God unless, I don't know. He gives me a heart. There was somebody who could fix my heart. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I this said dot, dot, that out loud. You go now. shaped hole, this oddly shaped hole in my heart. What could, <laughs> yeah. And of course, Slink is like, oh, if you met Jesus, you would feel completely different. If you had a personal relationship with Christ, our Savior, you would no longer feel that nihilism right. or whatever. He's like, ah. oh, that that's what I was going to say. Personal relationship with like a dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Slink is talking about Jesus and explaining him to Jack and talks about how he's met him and he's very kind and noble. Well, the only time that we know of that Slink has met him, Jesus was a newborn baby and he was kind <laughs> and noble. Right, he was a, how, a, how did you get that? A noble five <laughs> hour old. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. I mean, most infants are kind, I guess, and that they can't do anything else. 
<laughs> Never had one cut me off in traffic. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> I love the idea that this newborn baby was like sitting up high on a big chair or like smoking a cigar <laughs> and crossed, doing power moves that whole night. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, no, it does imply that Slink has met asshole babies before. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this one is kind and noble. So this is a this is a weird cartoon. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Jack's about to go off on a monologue about the evils of slavery. I need another fucking break. But first, let me give Act Three the hard sell. Can Jack overcome his cynical refusal to love Jesus in time? Will this children's cartoon include graphic depictions of capital punishment? Will Judah's teeth haunt my nightmares for the rest of my goddamn life? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the traumatizing conclusion of The Lion of Judah. You know, those big wireless providers are a lot like Republicans. They suck? No. I mean, yes, but that, that's They're not... They're lying to the masses in a flagrant attempt to enrich themselves? Uh, no. Well, I mean, still, still, yeah, but. Right. We should them with an until they can't anymore. Please, please stop guessing. See, see, like the GOP, big wireless providers want to narrowly define what constitutes a family. Would have taken me a while to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but luckily Mint Mobile remembers that families come in all shapes and sizes. That's why they decided to shake up the wireless industry with a brand new modern family plan. Each line starts at 15 bucks a month and you only need two lines to get started. No matter how big or small your family is, you deserve to save on your wireless service. And now you can do it without sacrificing on quality. Before I switched to Mint Mobile, I was paying more than three times as much for service that was no better. That's true. Whether you're buying for one or a family, Mint Mobile gives you the best rate. And at Mint, families start at just two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Plus, Mint Mobile's modern family plan Let's you mix and match data plans so everybody gets the amount of data that's right for them. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month, including the modern family plan, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Mint Mobile. Because your wireless provider probably wants to overthrow the government and replace democracy with a petulant man baby. I feel like we've taken that analogy too far. Republicans shouldn't be allowed to. He could have said vote. Uh, you don't. You don't know. You don't know. Maybe. Maybe I said vote. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the writers' room. So you you didn't like the white sheets? I feel like he didn't like the white sheets. Feels like he didn't like them. You, you know what? Se- second guy, why don't you why don't you take lunch too? Chicken feels, yeah. All right. Okay, boss. I'm getting the vibe that you did not like the white sheets thing. Is that what you're saying? You do. You set up a race war. You 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 had one side collecting white sheets and talking about cleansing. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, I, I hear that, but we gave the sheets to the black team. The black team that you were calling the uncleans. The unclean, right, but we're saying they're the good guys. We like the uncleans, so we're not in favor of the KKK. I well, think so, that's but, clear. But Okay, so but, but why have sheets at all? Because the leader of the uncleans had a prophetic dream about being inside a big white sheet. Right, but that's not... There's no dreaming crow in the butt. Like, you wrote that. Yeah, yeah, I did write that. I kind of painted myself into a corner with that. I get it. I get it. What? No, because there's no, there's no painting into corners with writing. You just, you just write whatever you want and then you just erase whatever you, what oh, you want later. <laughs> totally erase. Yeah. That, that's why you're the boss. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Well, erase it. The voice actors are recording act two right now. So it's too late to change that. Just do me a favor and act three. Nothing with bigot stuff, okay? Nothing with bigot stuff. Got it. Totally. Okay, so do you have any ideas for the ending? Yeah. So I'm thinking the whole thing with the animals is just a metaphor about freeing the Jewish people from being part of an evil religion that's full of bigotry and, you know, them instead becoming Christian, which is totally different and way better than Judaism, which is gross. Dude, that is perfect i absolutely love it that's great that's exactly love it awesome yeah yeah. and and it's cool because jewish people are white exactly Mm -hmm. wait are are they are they they? 
I think I think they're white. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open up on Slink waking up the next day to Jack the Donkey being dragged away in bondage after his big slavery speech the night before. <laughs> right? And then we get a montage of very slowly walking a donkey on a rope <laughs> forever. 19 minutes of that. <laughs> it takes so long. Now, keep in mind, by the way, that like we watched Jack give a whole speech about how bondage is terrible and everything, and then he's going to learn that, yeah, sometimes it works out just fine. Right? right? Immediately after. that, That's the next thing that's going to happen. That's the learned lesson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we, we we have a whole musical number of walking the donkey out of town. <laughs> it's so long. It's so stupid. Uh, uh, imagine a donkey on a rope, and now imagine nineteen minutes in your head. Do you know how long that is? <laughs> well, and, and what we have to see is that the the guy who's leading the donkey has to keep jerking his head with the rope because he's a bad donkey owner for no reason. Too, it's not like he's not walking; he's just no tugging at the rope over and over. And that's a noose, by the way. It is. Yes, that's, it, that's right. A noose, a donkey noose. <laughs> God. And so, but then he hands him off to a good donkey owner who takes the noose off of his neck, takes the rope off of the donkey. Could what? it be? Could yes, be? It is, yes, it is Bruce Marciano <laughs> himself uh, in the role of Christ our Savior. Yep. This whole scene is so bizarre. There's like this 90s pop ballad playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is very gently removing Jack's ropes. And then Jesus's hand is gently stroking his neck back and forth for way too long. Yes. yes. Way too long. This is like a love scene between Donkey and Jesus. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right right here. I was like, uh, sexual moment, weird. What is happening? Yes. And then Donkey goes, you're the baby they talked about to grown ass Jesus. <laughs> How would he know? <laughs> Oh, I can tell the, the the nobility that you had at five hours old is obvious. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then and then Jesus forgives the donkey of his sins. Like what kind of fucking what sins? Right, right. Were you in a show in Mexico or something? I don't like that's <laughs> that's fine. That's on you. you know, that's your thing. Yeah, but Jack is like, oh, I'm a terrible donkey, and no one should ever love me. And he's like, I forgive you, donkey. And he's like, I feel feel pretty good actually now oh well he's an atheist donkey he's a nihilist so oh he's that must be him it. for the yeah, atheism just... or maybe his judaism passed also <laughs> blaspheming against true, the holy true. spirit as donkeys are wont to do yeah so and and so jesus is like i'm gonna ride you into jerusalem and noah's dumb ass is like oh yeah. that's what <laughs> yeah. Well, the donkey's like, you need to help me save my friends by coming to Jerusalem, and I wanted Jesus to be like, sorry, I have a like a dinner thing today. It's like a whole, it's like we reserved one. one side of a table and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, so yeah, but and, and Jack turns to the the ravens that are in the tree, and he says, "Hey, go uh, tell the rest of the gang about this plot twist." It turns out I'm that donkey. You know, right? Because of course the the Raven Crow people are just still hanging out randomly. Yeah, yeah, they are assistants to the white <laughs> characters. Yeah, <laughs> and then we pass it. The, the the Ravens have to fly over the city for like three and a half minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> again, motion sickness again. Oh yeah, no kidding. But then the Ravens land at the market, and they're like, "Hey, we have to tell you the next plot point." But all the humans are throwing rocks at him going, oh, you filthy, unclean birds, go away. Yes, they're throwing rocks at the black, unclean characters. <laughs> Jesus. And, but, but, but they do manage to tell all of the, uh, the main character animals that the king is on his way. But just then, someone buys Judah. Will he survive long enough for Christ to redeem him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Slink the Rat is super concerned about Judah becoming a slave instead of the martyr that he's supposed to be. He's right. like, no, no, exactly. no. We can't let you get bought. You have to be a free sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then of course, once again, he's like, no, 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 this guy's going to kill you as a forgiveness of, of your sins. He's like, oh, you mean like he's going to tell a joke that's so good it really just kills me? And he's like, no, god damn it, man. We keep trying to explain this 
to you. And this is when it finally sinks in, right? This is where Judah finally realizes that he's going to be a sacrificial lamb. That Mary had. Yes. And is little. <laughs> yep. so meanwhile, Jesus rides into town. Jesus might as well crowd surf his way into town, right? Like the ruckus <laughs> applause that greets him at the door here. Waving palm trees everywhere. Yeah, right, right. Now, I want to point out, in the book of Matthew, Jesus actually rides two donkeys into town, an adult and a cult. Yeah, that's And right. I am so pissed. I've, I've always wondered how that works, and they're going to they're gonna cheat here <laughs> and only give us one. I was because it goes like, does he stand up like on one's back and the other doing like the the George Washington lean? The two donkeys are, are <laughs> dressed up like the horse costume. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but donkey, how does it work? Uh, but no, they only give us one fucking donkey. Dumb shit. Also, back to the whole like human animation thing. I cannot remember for the life of me in that scene with a crowd of people and Jesus, if we saw any of their faces or not. Do you guys remember? Mm, do not. For no. just a second, we see Jesus's face from the side and the weird, like, it looks like you put googly eyes on a popsicle stick. <laughs> it truly does. <laughs> it's so fucking bad. We just see it for a second. But no, the rest of it, we see him from behind and we see like a, a faceless mass of people in front of him. Yeah. And Jesus pets the pig. I feel like he wouldn't pet the pig, right? So anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so we cut back to somebody buying Judah. Jesus meets the pig. I feel like he's going to banish demons into him, send him off a cliff or something. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. They never pull the trigger on that one either. <laughs> oh, and this is when we get the table flipping thing, right? Yes. This is where we get Jesus's yeah. famous temper tantrum. Yeah. Which he's... escalates so quickly. Literally in the same scene, Jesus is like super chill, riding the donkey. Everyone's waving stuff. And he goes crazy. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the animation. His arms were just like yes. waving wildly <laughs> in the air. <laughs> like a rock'em sock of robot. He's flipping yes. these things uh, over. Yeah. <laughs> but in a really stiff, like, it looks like a Sims that's wearing robes. That's like, yeah. ah, my wife fell in the pool, like just wildly <laughs> waving around. <laughs> and tables are flying, but you don't really see his hands like make contact. It's just very no, the animation, animation. Is never worse than it is in this moment right here. And also, like they don't, you know, they don't build up to it in any way. So it's just all of a no. sudden he just walks in. And he's he's like. Hey, little piggy, why you're just swell. Table flip. Flipper table. <laughs> and nobody, so it, the, he goes, this is the temple, and he's mad that they're selling stuff in the temple that's like somehow bad. Yeah, the money lender, the money changers. Yeah, that's, the, that's who he's supposed to be going after. Right. And, but they're selling doves too there. So he flips some table. Nobody was just going to be like, hey, man, fucking stop. And just like <laughs> grab him and like <laughs> take Jesus away. That's what should have happened. But yeah, he flips a bunch of tables and in the Bible anyway, it's his big moment. But it, I love that the big moment for Jesus Christ is the same as losing a game of Monopoly. That's his right. like, yep. big thing is like, fuck this. That's exactly how it comes across. Yeah, exactly. So, OK, so the gang escapes, though, like while he's doing his tirade, he also up, like breaks their cages and flips over their enclosures and everything. So they all run out. So well, they all run to that same crossroads that we've been in so often. And they're like, which way did Judah go? And the Ravens are like, he went that away. Right. So they run <laughs> through the exact same crossroads, but going the other way this time. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys notice the posters on the walls? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there good puns here. If you thought that we were done with the white sheets, we were not. The posters <laughs> on the walls say things like missing sheet mystery, sheets, foul play suspected. Like foul. Plastered. Foul. Oh, okay, brilliant. Good one. Just plastered <laughs> all over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, by the way, so, so, so that they can get a whole chase scene or like running to the rescue scene. We have to watch him keep taking corners. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, straight away. <laughs> so many corners. But eventually they, they come to a dead end, right? They end up in this dead end alley, but they can hear Judah crying through the wall. So the guy who bought Judah like phased through a wall. I mean, there's no door. Judah. Yeah. Because they, they end up at a dead end. Yeah. They don't say how he got there. No, nope. they don't explain any of this. And then they hear judah crying through the wall or whatever right and they try to kick through it mm -hmm. oh and right before that drake says 
it's a wailing wall, which makes me feel like <laughs> they set up that entire nonsensical scene of he's just through a wall for that joke. They definitely did. You're, <laughs> You're right. right. You're right. That was the second best joke in the movie after totally that. Totally paid off. Night. Yeah, absolutely. It's worth it. Someone was like, we need to make a joke about a wailing wall because we're in Jerusalem. <laughs> There's so much inappropriate <laughs> to joke about shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, how can we make light of the holiest place in the world to this right. large group of people? Right. How can we turn that into a sight gag? <laughs> Just have a rooster make a joke about it. It'll you be guys fine. sleep for- Oh, a pun. Even better, yeah. Sleep for a half hour. I'll draw a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they hear they hear the wailing through the wall. Very clever. And they decide to kick through the wall to try to rescue Judah. But we see it from the inside and the outside. And from the outside, they're kicking a wall. And from the inside, they're kicking the ceiling. Yeah, how the ceiling is collapsing. How is the ceiling collapsing from kicking the base of the wall on the outside? What did the spatial dimensions do? A little change? Like, were they? I thought they were about to do like an Inception scene, right? Where they were like walking on the walls and see. Oh fuck, we're sideways, and you're yeah, right. Maybe the animators just assigned. They were like, "Hey, you guys make this side of the wall or the building where they're kicking, and we're gonna make this inside, and we're not gonna <laughs> talk to each other at all about anything else other than that." God, that's entirely possible. <laughs> Then they came back together and they were like, we did ceiling. Well, we did wall. <laughs> yeah. well, so, well, well, we're going to have to make fine. that fucking they'll, work. They'll never notice. Somebody needs to change it. <laughs> yes, somebody does. <laughs> ah, fuck it. And then they just went with it. We'll make a wailing wall joke instead yeah. of so, yeah, distract them. <laughs> you know, really, if you think about it, they're still going to be drying their tears from that wailing wall joke at this point. Nobody will notice. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So they, but they can't kick it in because if they try to kick the wall in, the ceiling will give and he'll die anyway. And then what would be the point? During this time, by the way, they accidentally kick the mouse slink back into his cage again. How does this keep happening? There's a lot of accidents with kicking and ropes. I feel like Monty is actually just looking for an opportunity to kick slink. Right? Like, he's just like, oh, I've accidentally kicked you again, Slink, you <laughs> fucking pretentious douchebag. Ooh, I won an yeah. Oscar. It was 1955, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I think Slink might just be a little creepy and wants to hang out with Judah, the baby lamb. Oh, oh all right, all right. And no matter which way we go, it's disturbing, so let's move on. <laughs> but this is where, of course, Esme says, oh, you know, we can't kick through, through the wall, but that's okay. Remember what the Scottish pigeon said. <laughs> <laughs> Only the king can say, and we saw the king earlier. Somehow we just knew, you know, we recognized, we saw him when he was five hours old. Obviously, he still has the same chin. So, <laughs> you know, we, we, we recognized him. And he's like, well, how will we find him? And the one, one of them says like, or I think it's Jack. He says, well, we'll all have to split up and go our own ways. And he's like, is that just a bad time? Or will we actually have little adventures? He's like, just a bad time. It's just, we're just. <laughs> yep. hundred <laughs> percent. I wanted Jesus to actually show up here and just explain that like, okay, I see you guys are trying to like do a metaphor for my, I'm, I do my thing. It doesn't matter. Animal stuff doesn't matter. <laughs> I have a prophecy. I'm going to do a thing. Which of you is involved when really doesn't matter. I can't stress that enough. So, okay. So it's time for another time padding musical montage where each of the animals goes off to a background we've already seen to ask if anybody's seen Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and a montage of animals being all sad about their Judaism, just like mwah, wallowing. It's so manipulative. We actually get a scene of Judah looking at us going, but I don't want to die. <laughs> so fucked up. They're giving this to children. As a Jewish person. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. He's literally crying, which is so weird that up until this point, he's just completely missed that. Like, we've all been let in on the fact that he's a sacrificial lamb. His mom was like, bye, go do great things and get martyred. And he's just now like crying about being killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I guess when you get right to it, like, it's just like, all right, well, now I'm nervous. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I love because they've got so little that they can do. Once again, they, they can only use these given backgrounds. So this is what we get in terms of looking for, for Jesus. Like, Jack will be like, hmm, is he left? Nope. Is he right? Fuck it. I give up. Right. <laughs> What about up? Did we? I think we switched up to left earlier. Oh, that's right. No, movie. that could be. You never know which direction. So we covered it then, right? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we get Drake just kind of looking over the city wall going, well, he's not in that courtyard. I'm done. So they all meet back at, <laughs> this is so stupid, at the end of the montage, they all meet back at the spot where they started the montage having accomplished nothing. <laughs> <laughs> not a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> but just then, they realize that Judah is gone. He's been taken away in the night. And there's a torches and pitch Forks type crowd wandering by. They're leading Christ to Pontius Pilate for judgment. Guys, this is a weird fucking cartoon. Once again, just imagine if you didn't know the mythology and you were just like, wait, are they going to kill that guy? <laughs> and there's just like dark shadows everywhere. Yes. It's so creepy and spooky and yeah. ominous. All right. So they run to see what's going on with Jesus. They don't make it to the city gates in time, though. The city gates get closed before they can get in. But Drake the Rooster can save the day with a little bit of wacky rooster parkour. (laughs) I like that he's literally being led to be tortured. Jesus is. And they cut from the scene. They're like, we need some comedic relief. Let's have a rooster do parkour. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What an appropriate thing to follow up that previous scene with. (laughs) Right. Hey, Jesus is getting his ass beat right now, but this rooster can jump really high, so huh? you should feel better about it. Huh? What about a pig sleeping right he's after that? He's going yeah. yeah. to burp in his sleep, I bet, or fart. <laughs> Come on, guys. And of course, this is, and again, like there's three clever moments in this movie. They all involve Drake the rooster, apparently, but this is where Drake wanders by the denial of Peter. He's the fucking rooster that crows after the third denial, guys. That was perfect. Yeah, it was pretty solid. It's in the Bible. They actually nailed that. I thought, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, cool. no, I thought so. I thought so too. I was just like, all right, credit where credit's due. That was I didn't see that coming. I don't know why I didn't. But right after he does, he's like, cock a doodle do, I've done my part. And then they throw him back over the gate and he's back with the rest of the gang. So that's all he does. It's not like he did it on his way to something else that moved the plot along. So that's t- to be clear, that's God's plan. God was like, parkour, parkour, parkour. <laughs> Peter denial three times, cock a doodle do, and throw him back out. Yes. That's my plan. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, had it all worked out. So, all right, I know what you're thinking as the audience are we going to get another sleeping montage or what? Yes, we are. <laughs> We're going to spend a good 90 seconds now watching all of these animals sleep for the third time in the film. Jesus. God, it might be fourth. Actually, no, it is. It is fourth. It is fourth because we've cut on, like, we meet them all asleep. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so it's the next morning. Boss, the, the raven, uh, Michael Madsen, shows up to tell him where in the Bible we are. This is the part where Jesus is dragging his cross to Golgotha. Yeah. Apparently, they made crucifixion day like a bank holiday in Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody's Everyone's there. Just like, rah, 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 rah. Everyone who's anyone, yeah. Buying little crosses <laughs> from vendors. It's weird. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I love the, we get this whole big long thing where the animals are like, why are they torturing him to death? He's done nothing wrong. And I'm like, how would you guys know what he's done? Right. <laughs> right? Like he could be the Jeffrey Epstein of their time for all you know. <sighs> They're animals. Yeah. They're really getting confident with their judging. Yeah, and and it's not like they're like animals reading the newspapers on a regular or something. (laughs) They can't even read Jerusalem on the side of the box. Yes, exactly. I mean, maybe the head, maybe if the fucking Scottish hen showed up and was like, nah, you know, he's completely innocent, but it makes no fucking sense as is. Where is she? Because she knows everything, but she only pops up like two times and it's like, well, no shit. We figured that out now. Yeah. (laughs) We needed her with us the whole fucking time. Why don't you take the one person that can read? It makes no sense. <laughs> she, she was holding down the fort at the farm. I don't know. With no animals in it? Yeah, right, right. Like they were milking her. <laughs> it, it, not, none of this makes any sense. So, okay. So meanwhile, Judah, the lamb, is the next one up for ritual slaughter. And he's literally having to watch the knives be sharpened for yeah. his sacrifice. <laughs> In a children's movie. Yes, this is a fucked up cartoon, guys. So, okay. So the gang launches Jesus all the way out of town. The cartoon animals watch nails be driven through Christ's hands and feet in this cartoon. At the same time, we see the priest dragging Judah towards the altar. You get the symbolism here, I'm sure. So now we're witnessing the animals witness a crucifixion, just like we watched them watch the birth. But this time, they don't hold back on the sound effects. And you can hear the nail and hammer and Jesus' <laughs> Jesus's groans. So, again, 
Violent death, totally okay for kids. Childbirth sounds, no. Right. Not okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what What the fuck? Go into wow. the birthing hut outside of town. Yes. And I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> I see that's unclean. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's so fucked up. Because now we should point out, like, we don't actually watch the nails go in. We watch them, like, lower him onto the cross, and then we can see the, like, dude hammering a nail in from a distance right. or whatever. But we do watch him put the crucifix up, or put the cross up, right? right? We might as well see blood splatter onto the guy's ham- like face as he does the hammer. It's, like, so <laughs> graphic. And you can totally hear it. Well, honestly, the only reason they didn't do that is because we would have had to show a human face to do that part. <laughs> so. Right. No, no, no. Yeah, you don't, that's, you don't, that's why they didn't. You don't fully show a Jewish person yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my the very end. <laughs> so yeah, so they put Jesus up on the cross. Jack leads the fucking gang up Golgotha for a heart to heart with Jesus. We're we go with the John, the Gospel of John's version of Jesus's last words. It is finished. Just as a quick reminder, Matthew and Mark <laughs> have, "My God, why hast thou forsaken me?" And Luke has, "Father, into thy hand I." commend my spirit so like but you know like what are the odds that everybody would get the last words spoken by their savior correct why would they go with (laughs) the it is finished like the other ones you just read were some things but we get like all right uh, yeah i'm out it's not going great i'm up on this cross um (laughs) okay i'm pretty sure i'm dying like right now last words scum the savior gotta make this good good. (laughs) don't have it be dumb it is finished. Stupid. <laughs> it's because he knew his audience was animals at this point. He was like, eh, I would have said those other things, <laughs> but there's no people here to record it. So oh, I'll that, just go with see, three words. Yeah, now it makes <laughs> sense, right? Because the last thing that he heard that any human said was, you know, until thy hand, I can mend my spirit. But then I guess John had... The pig's account. Like, things, do the maybe. powers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right <here. laughs> He was just like, boo, 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 boo. all right. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, but Jesus dies. There's a great tremor that is felt upon the land. I, I wrote my notes here. I bet they skip Matthew's army of zombie saints rising <laughs> from the ground. And I was right. They do. They did skip that. Barely. It was still a pretty intense scene. <laughs> oh, that it was. Yeah. That it was. They didn't shy away from much. I like that the earthquake knocked over the lamb slaughter guy. So the lamb slaughter guy is about to kill Judah the lamb at this moment too. Mm-hmm. And he's like worried he's gonna, the king's never going to show up and save me. But the earthquake does. And lamb slaughter guy with his knife <laughs> has like a really long, big slapstick <laughs> pratfall that like completely... <laughs> he falls down the Odessa fucking <laughs> steps. Just yeah. line up. <laughs> yeah, doink, 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 doink the whole fucking way. I wanted him to fall on his own knife at the end or something like that. You That's know? what I thought was about to happen. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but no, but, but the old the banana peels there and then the <laughs> green shell knocks something out of the... Too much. <laughs> you hit the green shell just right, you can get a hundred men right there, though. <laughs> so again, this is very narrow. I'm doing real narrow shit tonight. So, but then, yeah, the, the altar cracks, the big flag thing rips or whatever... Slink the mouse grabs the rope and cuts Judah free. So now Judah does get to live. And he is elated that he's been free. And he says he knows it was Jesus. But then when Slink tries to ask how he knows it was Jesus, he has nothing to back it up with other than he says, it's a feeling, which is very consistent with Christian theology. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. The, but, the, but the script very much goes like, I just for for the whole thing to make sense, I have to know that. It's just the, the rest of the movie will not work if I don't. I mean, right. It's a relationship. Yeah, it's a feeling. Trust me, bro. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so the the gang is up on Calvary Hill, and they hear Judah celebrating the death of the Messiah. In his defense, he doesn't know yet why. He's but he's like, "Hooray! I'm, I'm free! I'm free! I don't care what it costs." You know. <laughs> And, and it just, like, again, I know that the character doesn't know what happened, but yippee is a weird emotion to follow up Jesus' death with, right? This little, like, child voice. It's like, yay, this is the best day ever. Yeah. And they're all just, like, <laughs> looking at his corpse up on the cross. <laughs> it's not appropriate. So, yeah, so they run down to where Judah is, and, and Jack has to explain to him that the Jews killed Jesus. It's all their fault. Of course. 
And Esme realizes the entirety of Christian theology, <laughs> right? She's like, oh, wait, now he's the blood sacrifice and we need no longer, the animals need no longer <laughs> suffer. You know, it's like, how did you get there? <laughs> Make the Scottish hens show up at least. Right. <laughs> and of course, then they have to do this sad moment where Judah's like, no, he's not dead. I'll show you. And he has to run off and, and thank Jesus's corpse. But, uh, so that we don't have to go through that, they have him like he shows up and the bodies have already been removed. <laughs> so now the gang follows Judah to Christ's tomb. And they're like, yeah, that's what they do with him when they die. And he's like, nah, I'm pretty sure he'll show up in the next day or three. I'm, I'm pretty sure if we just <laughs> hang out here, there will be a big third act moment. And they all have to be like, all right, man, it's been like a couple days now. Probably just a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's building the moment I'm waiting. <laughs> and we should point out once again, in, in terms of time padding, we watch three days go by. We watch the two sunrises. We watch the two sunsets. We watch the third day dawn. It's just, it's so much. <laughs> 24 hours of sleeping in increments of eight. We watch that in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had to rewind it because I was like, wait, what is happening? Why are we, is this scene still going? Did I just right. skip something? <laughs> yeah, because there's like a point where you're just like, they're going to do this for the rest of time, aren't they? They're just going to do right. all the days between this day and that, aren't they? But yeah. Are they playing out the three days in real time? Because that's how it's starting to feel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, and of course, all the animals are having the like, hey, how long do we indulge this bullshit kind of a thing? So finally, on the third day, they tell them, presumably for the like 800th time that like, no, humans don't just spontaneously come back to life. You're going to have to come with us. I like that Jack, you know, the atheist was like, guys, we just met this lamb like a few days. We just take off, right? Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Why do we care so much what happens with this? I'm not even with you guys. So, <laughs> so yeah, so they, but they kind of finally convinced Judah. He starts to kind of gaw his way off with him. And then he's like, no, I'm running back one last time because I'm not giving up on Jesus. And they're like, it's not giving up, man. It's that we have to eat. You know, eventually we have to, we're going to eat all of the fucking hay that's around here. All the, it's mostly fried pubes anyway. So <laughs> we got to go get something. But then Judah has this whole big monologue where he explains that that big round stone isn't big enough to contain the love of Jesus. I think they stole that from like a Hillsong pastor's message from <laughs> one Sunday morning. That's exactly how it felt. <laughs> that big rock ain't holding in love of Jesus. That sounds like a title. Yes. Yeah. So, but just then, of course, the stone rolls back and Jesus steps out and he's like, I was hoping that there would be a lamb I could hug right when I came out. <laughs> what? Yeah. Judah was so annoying about all of this like the amount of times they were trying to be like hey jesus is dead hey he's in a tomb that i just really wish that they had convinced him to leave just a couple more hours before and then we could have been done with it like he'd be like well shit i guess he was dead after all and then the movie would have ended he lives the rest of his life as a jew and yeah right <laughs> but he was so like cocky and pompous about like look i told you guys it's jesus it was just like oh fuck that's not how life works buddy <laughs> that's how christianity works though yeah then he just walks back up to slaughter guy he's like all right go ahead, right. Go ahead. i didn't really help so everybody um shows up and and, and get or comes up and gets scritches from jesus i guess right <laughs> I wanted Jesus to be like, oh, it's animal. I thought oh, my lady friend was going to be here, maybe. <laughs> you guys again? <laughs> Animals are cool, though. <laughs> yeah, right. Are you guys eating pubes? <laughs> <laughs> and this is, of course, the first time we get a, a, an actual good look at the Jesus face. This is the first. This is when Jaws finally comes up on the deck a, a little bit here. <laughs> and man, is it obvious why we waited this long. He has a unibrow. <laughs> so the it's animators are like look we, we, we're, we're paying by the brow guys there's no reason I'm not tweezing this guy for you I spent a lot of time on this <laughs> alright so now we wrap up we start with Judah and his mom's reunion Judah comes back to his mom and she's and, and I feel like he should come back and say lady you knew they were taking me to kill myself there was not a time for euphemism right, right. alright what the Oh, 
Thank you. You guys need to talk about this. Clearly. <laughs> I'm surprised she wasn't pissed when she first saw him because she was so excited saying goodbye when he was going off to be sacrificed. And yeah. now he's clearly <laughs> right. coming back having not done his job. Did you get blemished? Yeah, oh, right. Oh, <laughs> hey. Great. Yeah, now we're going to get in trouble with the pastor or whatever. <laughs> no, man. So, yeah, but and then we get the gang heading back to their farm, I guess. But Jack decides that he doesn't want to go with them. He wants to go back to Jerusalem and help with Christ's ministry. Oh, is that what he was doing? (laughs) That's what he was doing. He's going to go back and give rides for the apostles. He's going to drive Uber in Jerusalem, I guess. I wanted somebody to be like, oh, okay, you're going to go back. Why'd you walk all the way out of town with us? (laughs) <laughs> and now you're, you're just turning it's around. Really, no sense. Really. No, he literally walks like halfway home, and then was like, "All right, guys, I'm going to stay in Jerusalem," and then proceeds to take like a three day journey all the way back. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right. And then so, and and that, so with that wrapped up, we we cut back to the crows. We get one la- last final scene where one of the crows says, "Hey, does this mean that we're clean again?" And the other one's like, "Yeah, it sure does." He goes, "What does that mean exactly?" So it means that the humans can eat us, <laughs> and they're like, "Really? That's not the exact last line of the movie, is it?" And it's like, "It sure is." Okay, seriously, <laughs> thanks to Jesus, people can eat crow. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's the Jesus. end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've watched, me and Heath have watched a bunch of happy science cult movies and shit like this. So this is a very different question for us than <laughs> than it is for you, Eve. But I'm curious to know, to close things out, where does this movie rank in terms of most fucked up cartoons that you have ever seen? You can include Japanese animation as well. <laughs> oh, this is, this is really high up there. And I've seen the original animated uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which was... That was severely fucked up. Oh, okay. we got to do that on the show. In terms of the racism, I imagine they're pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Although the excessive white sheets in this one, I think, just sent it right over the edge. <laughs> and I, I have to rank it as the worst children's animated movie I have ever seen. Awesome. Awesome. Do you think the white sheets were on purpose or missed as a problem and left there by accident? I I, I don't see how you could possibly put I that just, in. Yeah, by without I, it's it's real hard to give them the benefit of the doubt. There's no reason for it. And used used in the same scene as the word cleansing yes. used multiple times. Right. So I feel like it was on purpose. It's like the shittiest dog whistle ever. It's just a big, loud whistle that everybody can fucking hear. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. dogs, too. But yeah, right. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm For, for whatever reason, I feel almost honored to have, have made the top spot on the worst cartoon you've ever seen. But hopefully we can we can beat that eventually and have you back on sometime. <laughs> I'd love to. All right. So, and, and obviously, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. But if our audience wanted to hear more from you, uh, r- remind them where to go. Yeah, thanks, guys. I had so much fun. This was awesome. I am over on TikTok as Eve underscore was framed. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter uh, under the same handle, Eve underscore was framed. Awesome. Or just check the show notes. We'll have everything linked there as well. And well, that does it for our review of The Lion of Judah. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to drop a pin into next week. So Heath, tell us what's on deck. Faith under fire. Uh, We got Kevin Sorbo, Dean Kane, I believe. I'm very All right. excited. All right, I was, I was, because I, you know, I, I get real happy with cartoons. It's always hard to come off of them, but coming off of them with car- Kevin Sorbo is something of a cartoon, so <laughs> I can handle that. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 357 to a merciful close. Once again, huge thanks to Eve for hanging out with us tonight, and perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to catch yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godop, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing the Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or send a message questions, you can email godop at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Term options takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick and Google Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bostick, I'm an illusions promise to work harder and another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Jesus of Nazareth went on to visit people in visions as a white guy for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> The crows start a family dry cleaning business specializing in white sheep. <laughs> <laughs>
Drake, Horace, and Esme got back to the farm just in time to be murdered and eaten. <laughs> they did. As Christians. Yeah, well, right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.